In this video we're going to take a look at installing the Windows Server 2008 Release 2 operating system. Now this is being installed for the first time on a computer that has had no operating system so it's booting directly from the CD that I inserted in there while I turned the computer on. If this is being loaded on a computer that already had an operating system you may have to modify your BIOS or CMOS settings to actually boot from the CD and making sure that you boot from the CD in order for it to load. But I've got the operating system starting up now. It's going to load through the setup wizard that comes with it to install all the files and so we're going to go through that wizard here. I'm now prompted here with the installation wizard so let's go ahead and hit next for the language and I'll choose install now. And I've got several different choices for the actual operating system to be installed here on mine. Yours might have some of these or maybe not all of them. But what we've got here, basically the difference here between the full installation and the server core installation is the fact that the full installation is going to give you your full graphical user interface where the server core is going to be more of a command line operating system. You also have the choices here between standard, enterprise, data center, and the web server 2008 release 2. The standard is what's going to be found on most typical small businesses. It's going to give you the primary functions of all the servers be able to run it as a domain controller and so forth. Enterprise gives you a little bit more options, uh, gives you basically more RAM that you can have installed on your computer. And there's a couple other differences between them, but the standard we're going to get away with on our lessons to be able to use. More of the mid-sized companies are going to probably use the enterprise, and of course the large data centers are going to use the data center version. The web server 2008 release 2 is more of a stripped down version to run as a web server itself. And so I'm going to choose the full installation on the standard version and we're going to go ahead and hit next. And I'm going to go ahead and accept the license agreement. And now the option I want to choose here is the custom. And I do not have a previous operating system installed and so I, what I have here is an unallocated disk that has no partitions and so forth. If you are familiar with your partitions and you do already have partitions on your computer itself you can if you want to get rid of them you could do that under your options you can actually delete all the partitions until you get an empty unallocated space uh, like you see here and so what we're going to do is let Windows let the wizard in Windows actually do all the partitioning and so forth now that I've got this highlighted I'm just going to go ahead and hit next and what you see here is it's going to go ahead and copy the files to the actual hard drive itself and then complete the installation and this is probably going to take about 20 to 30 minutes to do this particular step. After your computer completes the installation, what it's going to do is restart, and then you're going to be prompted here to change the password for the first time you log in. And I'm going to go ahead and choose OK here, and we're going to have to set a password that's going to meet the complexity requirements for Windows Server 2008. Basically, you're going to need to have three of the four things. You're going to need to have a symbol, an uppercase character, lowercase character, or number. And so three of those four things have to be there, and we're going to want to set it at least eight characters long. So the password I typically use is just the capital P, the at symbol, SSWORD. And what it allows us to do is have a complexity requirements met. I'll type it in again, capital P, the at symbol, SSWORD. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit this little arrow to begin and it says my password has been changed. Now we'll hit OK to log in. And after your computer logs in, you're going to be prompted with the initial configuration tasks window, and we'll talk about that here in the next lesson.